Hey everyone, and welcome to question one associated with the second measures of association lecture focusing on absolute measures. As usual, I recommend you pause the video, attempt the question on your own, and then watch the remainder of the video to see whether you did it correctly. So this is kind of two questions in one. So a randomized clinical trial is performed to evaluate the effectiveness of drug X on risk of colon cancer, with their results obtained in the upper two by two table to the left. They also collect data regarding risk of diarrhea among study participants, with those results obtained in the bottom two by two table to the left. So we're asked first, in terms of risk of colon cancer, what is the number needed to treat? So we know that the first step for this is calculating the risk among the exposed and unexposed. So we do, if we do risk among patients who had drug X exposure, that would be equal to the number who, um, the number who had colon cancer among those who received drug X, so 15, divided by the total number of people who received drug X, which is 100. So the risk is 0 0.15. We then would calculate the risk among those who did not receive drug X, and that would be equal to 100 over 500, which is equal to 0 0.20. And in this case, because the risk of colon cancer was lower among people who received the drug or had the exposure, we know that we're dealing with a beneficial exposure or treatment, and therefore we would use the absolute risk reduction. So absolute risk reduction is equal to risk among the unexposed minus risk among the exposed, which in this case would be 0 0.2 minus 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.05. We then would calculate the number needed to treat as one divided by the absolute risk reduction, which would equal to one over 0 0.05, which is equal to 20. With the interpretation of this being, for every 20 people who receive drug X rather than placebo, one additional paper, uh, patient will not have colon cancer. So again, drug X or the exposure was beneficial in this case. Therefore, we, we uh, calculated an absolute risk reduction and an associated number needed to treat. If we then move to the second question where it says in terms of risk of diarrhea, what is the number needed to harm? Again, we need to calculate the risk of diarrhea in each of our groups. So the risk among those who receive drug X and the risk among those who did not receive drug X. And in this case, the risk of diarrhea among those who received drug X would be 50 over 100, which is equal to 0 0.5. And the risk among those who did not receive drug X is 200 over 500, which is equal to 0 0.40. In this case, because we see that the risk of the outcome is higher among those who receive the drug or the exposure or the intervention. We know that we're dealing with a harmful exposure and therefore we need to calculate the attributable risk. And the attributable risk is instead of the risk of unexposed minus risk of exposed is just the risk of the among the exposed minus the risk among the unexposed, which in this case would equal 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4, which is equal to 0 0.1. And because this is a harmful exposure intervention, we calculate the number needed to harm, which is equal to one over the attributable risk, which is equal to one over 0 0.1, which is equal to 10, with the interpretation being for every 10 patients who receive drug X rather than placebo, one additional patient will have diarrhea or the bad outcome. So as you can see in each of these cases, the first step is calculating the uh, respective risks in each of the groups. And then again, absolute risk reduction and attributable risk are basically the same exact concept. The only difference being 
that the absolute risk reduction is used in the setting of beneficial exposures or treatments, and therefore is associated with the number needed to treat. And the attributable risk is used in the setting of harmful exposures or interventions, and therefore it's associated with the number needed to harm. So don't get confused or trip yourself up trying to distinguish too much between these two concepts. As always, um, if you had trouble with this question, I recommend watching the associated lecture. Please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.